Can't let Greg be by himself. And then what about the week of uh, New Year's? Are you back? Yeah, I'll be back. Uh, That's the 30th? 30th. Is that the 30th of Monday? Yeah. That would make sense. That's seven days later. Yeah. Yep, there you go. Yeah, so we'll be here the 23rd and the 30th. Yeah, we'll be here. Unless we're not. Unless we're not. If we're not here, we're not here. We're not here. It is online. Sorry for uh, the poor quality. How do they get to it? Yeah. Uh, go to U.S. Staffing Facebook page, okay. and we are we're Facebook Live now on our. <laughs> we're Facebook. about to ruin your day. <laughs> yeah. So get it on your phone. Eat. On your phone, yeah. on your desktop, your on watch. your tablet, on your probably not watch, but. Yeah, I don't we look know. better when we're really small on the watch <laughs> <laughs> than we do really big on that's, large that's screen that's TV. Absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, how hey, about the lions? The, how about them lions? Yeah. In my little world, they won again yesterday. I, you know, they're not disappointing. <laughs> yeah, it's, they're, it's what we've come to expect. I know it. It's it, well, it so is. like we talked about, uh, they can't ruin their draft potential at this point. No, you got to keep, keep losing. losing. Yeah. <laughs> keep losing. The Red Wings finally won. Yeah, not last night. No, not last night, but the night before. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, Greg, today we're talking to working parents. So we thought we would start with two <laughs> funny quotes about parents from two funny guys. This first one is from Ray Romano. Ray Romano. And he jokes that having children is like living in a frat house. <laughs> Nobody sleeps, everything's broken, and there's a lot of throwing up. <laughs> that's, that's not far from the truth. We had three boys at home, and I can tell you absolutely, that is yeah, so very, very true. <laughs> that's right, yeah, you guys got mm-hmm. a couple. So how about this one, Jerry Seinfeld said, he said, a two-year-old, now this goes for grandkids too, by the way, the one I'm going to read, not just, not just your own grandkids. So a two-year-old it's kind of like having a blender, but you don't have a top on it. So, like, you know, it's just, <laughs> just going everywhere. Everything's coming out of the blender all at once. <laughs> well, speaking of parenting, this week's topic challenges working parents as we enter this new year. You know, we know from our own exit interviews, Ben, as, as uh, with our employees at U.S. Staffing who leave us, uh, the people that we place, when, when they leave, we do exit interviews with them. So we kind of know why they're leaving. We know the number one reason people oh, are yeah. leaving their jobs, it's not because of a bad supervisor grade. That's right. People leave their jobs, at least what we're seeing, because of family concerns uh, that they have. Yeah, and these concerns are often child care, sick children, school issues, and a number of many, many other issues that arise when working parents try to balance home and work. Yeah. So we thought we'd push the pause button for a second as we get ready to enter into the new year and try and help out families that have one or both parents working. So this isn't just like a... Two, two working yes. parent issue. Right? This is just for the. This is also for the families that have one working parent. Yep. You know, so everybody yeah. gets to everybody gets to play in this one. Yeah. So Elizabeth uh, Saunders recently wrote an article for the Harvard Business Review, and it's titled, of no surprise, "Working Parents: Does Your Schedule Reflect Your Values?" And just so we're clear again, this article is not just for that family with two working parents. This article is also for those families that have uh, only one working parent, or maybe even both parents working at home. Yeah, Uh, absolutely. At this time in this economy. So listen, we know that all parents struggle with questions like, can I make it home in time for dinner? Will I be able to help with the driving schedule this evening and the activities going on with all our kids? Or can I even arrive in time to tuck my kids in bed? Mm -hmm. How much work, you know, another thing is uh, travel. Travel, You know, those of us that travel. Can I get my kids in bed before the lines come on on, again at night? (laughs) Who cares? (laughs) Probably the wrong question to ask. <laughs> That's right. But, you know, the list goes on and on. There's a million of those questions right. that, as a parent, you struggle with. Well, the purpose of this article is to challenge all working parents to be intentional about their schedule. And the author stresses the need for what she calls a values-driven schedule, kind of a term that she created. Mm-hmm. A values-driven schedule requires you to determine what is most important to you and your family and then craft your calendar around those priorities rather than just letting your calendar like happen to you yeah absolutely so So here are three steps any working parent can take to get started in creating a values driven schedule the first step is create a list of categories on what's most important to you Mm -hmm. and your family and i I definitely would suggest talking to your spouse about this as well (laughs) to understand what's most important do the following create categories of what needs to be scheduled like 
time for work, time for family, time for exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're an adult learner, uh, you definitely need to create a category for education. Yeah, so if you're in school, make sure you include that as a category. That would be a big miss. I so, would yeah, because it takes a lot of time. <laughs> so for each category then, identify some realistic goals. You know, mm -hmm. and Now, the next step suggested by the author is to develop a values-based schedule to define or the, the step to define that values-based schedule is define why those categories are important. So it's kind of like the why part of the part of the process. Sure. So once you have those listed, uh, those important categories listed um, that need to be scheduled and the goals for each of them, think about why each one of those things are important to you. Like, why is this even on my radar? Yeah, you know, you're going to want to ask yourself, you know, 50 years from now, would I be glad with this category being the most important in my life right now? 50 years from now? Greg, we're not. Ben might be. Ben might be. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Seventy. Careful he's twenty. He's this. twenty. So yeah. Be careful <laughs> about how you say this. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're so wreck my holiday. We will be. We will be centurions and above, above right. Greg, in fifty years. <laughs> so when I'm ninety-two, will I be happy with the decision I make today? So this is, but it is an important step yeah. because thinking about the why can strengthen your resolve to follow through. That you do want to, you know, be forward looking. Yeah, I mean that's the whole point of this question, yeah. whether it's fifty years or or twenty or less or, for Greg yeah. and I. <laughs> in twenty years. <laughs> All right. So the final step in creating About a twenty minutes. Twenty <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so this final step in creating a values based schedule is to merge those important categories with your with your schedule with your calendar. So here's how this step works. Once you're clear on the priority and the goals of those categories, identify some related actions that you need to schedule. Start blocking off time, for example, in your daily and weekly calendar for some actions. Uh, be sure to have discussions along the way with, like you mentioned, Ben, your spouse, you know, the people who are important to you, your children even, your coworkers, uh, even your boss. So including these people in the process helps improve the likelihood that you'll follow through on that, on that schedule that you're creating. Yeah, and if you're a hockey parent, your schedule's pretty much made for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, just <laughs> follow the, the, the player's right. calendar. <laughs> so. But, you know, as, as we head into 2020, think about your work-life balance. If you're an employer or a business owner or even an employee, and, you know, if things aren't going well, then contact us. Maybe it's time to get a fresh start somewhere else. Yep. Jim, how can people contact us? Ben and Greg, if business leaders and potential team members want to talk with us, they can find us on Facebook at U.S. Staffing Agency. They can live chat with us on our website at usstaffingagency.com or come on over to our Jackson location at 707 North Wisner. We're out there between Ganson and North Street. Mm -hmm. Our phone number is 787-6150. Thank you, man. Thanks. Thanks.